Hello folks, Jason Christman here of JC's Bees. And today I'm going to do a video on setting up my queenless colonies for queen cells. I've had a lot of requests for this over the years and I've got the opportunity today while I'm making my splits to make a video for you. Now, these splits that I'm going to be making, since it is July, we're halfway through you know, our warm season, working towards fall. With that being said, I'm going to make these splits a little bit stronger than I would, say, a month and a half ago. Um, for instance, a month and a half ago, I made one frame split. So that's one frame of brood, frame of honey, frame of pollen, closed them up. Um, that worked out great, but we're further in the year now. Not as much time left for them to build up. So I'm going to give everyone at least two frames of brood. Some might get three. So uh, we'll get in there and get started. And uh, hopefully I can remember to break down all this step by step for you and help everybody out. Now, just in case you're not aware, I'll put a link down in the description of the video. Um, I have a grafting video that shows step by step how to do the queen rearing or grafting. And... Uh, if you follow that along with this video, you should be able to do this whole procedure yourself. Now granted, it will take plenty of practice and these steps need to be followed exactly. Okay, the first thing you're gonna do, I encourage you to do this because if you don't, you'll regret it, is you're gonna get in your colony and see how many queen cells you're gonna have tomorrow. So that's gonna consist of pulling the grafting frame out, smoking the bees off, do not shake the frame, and uh, kind of get a rough count and make sure you've uh, actually got grafted queen cells ready to go for tomorrow. Um, if you don't and you make all these splits up today, tomorrow when you go to get the grafting frame out, you're going to realize, oh, I have no queen cells. And I've got all of these splits. What do I do now? So you can avoid that by just simply going in the hive, taking a quick count off the grafting frame, and going from there. So that's what we're going to do real quick. Okay, so I've got the supers removed and I'm down to my grafting frame, which is right here. And I smoke the bees a little bit so I can get in there and get it. Um, these are uh, a survival stock I've had for two years. Now on this particular grafting frame, if you follow me at all on Facebook, you've seen that I've been teaching my cousin how to graft. The way we actually did it is we both grafted into each bar except for the very bottom bar. He did all of those himself just to see if any of his took. So with that being said, you can see we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen cells out of fifty-two. Not the greatest, but you know I'm not going to turn them down. So he'll be interested in seeing them results and he's got lots of practice in the do. So see why I suggested that you make, take the time to look at your queen cells? That could have been devastating if I would have made up a crap load of uh, splits and only had a few cells. Okay, so we're going to get in here and we're going to make our first split. Each one of these nukes already has two frames of wax foundation. This one's got the, the black plastic foundation, but it's got a little bit of comb started. Um, so they're already set with two frames apiece. And uh, we're going to go in here and get a couple frames of brood, frame with honey and pollen. And it's all going to go in here. So we need three frames from this colony. Yeah, that's all drone cone. We don't want that. Drones aren't going to boost their population in a positive way, so don't use drone cone. You want some worker uh, broods, what you're looking for. And this one was just laid in. Lots of eggs. Don't want that. Hmm. 
Okay, this one might work. Nice frame of brood. The open cells are nectar. Okay, we'll take this one. Take it in here. Not a whole lot of bees on it, so we'll shake some in now. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. One thing. One thing you do want to look for, though, before you drop it in here, is to make sure the queen is not on this frame. And I've been marking all of my queens. And she's not on here. So this frame will work. Okay, now let's see what else we can find here. Another nice frame of brood. The open cells are full of nectar. Same with on this side. So I'll look over it for the queen. Queen's not there. Let me get rid of this. drop this in here and you can see that we have plenty of nectar on the frame so I'm not going to worry about a frame of honey now what I'm going to worry about is some bees to shake in to boost the population a little bit more look over it for the queen I don't see the queen. You know, I think what I'm going to do is just give them this whole frame of brood versus shaking and bees. When you give them three frames of brood like that, that's going to boost the population quite a bit here real quick. Okay, so I'm going to consider that one done. I'm going to close it up. Okay, now back over to this hive. I need to make up for what I just took out of here. I'm going to put the drone comb back. Then I'm going to put a frame here. I'm going to stick a frame here. And I'm going to stick a frame. Right there. Okay, now we'll close them back up. I say it's hot. I should be cleaning up that burr comb and stuff, but it's hot out here. I just want to be done. So tomorrow, it'll be 24 hours, these will be queenless, and uh, they'll know it by then. So tomorrow, when the queen cells are ready to remove from the finisher colony, I can put one cell per split. Um, now I do recommend that you use these uh, plastic cell protectors. Keep anything or anybody from chewing out the side of the cell. Only the tip which lets the queen emerge. Well worth the investment. So uh, tomorrow we'll insert a cell and uh, finish up this video. So just got to be patient.
All right, folks, it's been 24 hours and it is extremely muggy, so I'm trying to work fast here. I almost forgot about the video, actually. I'm trying to move so quick. Uh, what I'm doing now is popping off the, the queen cells very gently and placing them in cell protectors. At this stage, you know, they're about ready to hatch. Matter of fact, this one over here has already emerged. And when I saw that, I knew I had to get the, the ball on the roll. Matter of fact, uh, my cousin's supposed to be coming out in three hours to help me do this. But seeing that that one's already emerged, I need to be ahead of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and do it before she kills all of these. And uh, get it over with. It's only getting hotter, so... He wanted one of his own cells in his split, so we'll set that one over there. It's that one we knew that he grafted. Like I say, we kind of both hopped around on the two top bars here. And then uh, the bottom one, I said, you know, the only way we're going to know if yours took is if you graft one bar by yourself. So two of his we know took. Are the rest of these mine? Or are they his? We don't know. So as you can see, I'm just taking this uh, cell and real gently putting it down in the cell protector. And that will keep anything from chewing out the side. Now when I took this out of the, this frame out of the colony, I laid the frame on the side and I smoked the bees off. You don't want to shake them off. You don't want to harm your queens when they're almost ready to hatch. Oh, try and be as gentle as possible with them. And I thought it was this one she hatched out of. It must have been one down here. I know I seen one. I got a picture of it. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to run around and insert one of these queen cells into all of the splits that we made yesterday. By this point, it's been 24 hours. They've now realized we don't have a queen, and we also don't have any young enough brood to raise any. So that's where we come into place. Okay, folks, these are my splits from yesterday. Don't look real good from the camera, but there's a bunch of bees down in there. What I'm going to do is find the frame with the most bees covering brood. Which seems to be right here in the middle. And we're just going to put this cell. We're going to open these frames up a little bit. I like to do actually is get it down below the wood so that it actually sticks in the comb and closes up a little bit tighter. So that extra gap for a couple of days won't be a problem because they're not weak or strong enough to start drawing a bunch of burr comb. And close that one up and move on to the next one. Okay, look through the frame with the brood. All the bees seems to be right here. And drop this down in here below the top board on the frame so that it sticks in the comb. And the reason I say that is it just closes up the frames a little bit tighter if you've got it in the comb. Now you don't want to squeeze it to the point that the bees don't know there's a queen in there because they can't smell her. That actually needs another frame, but I'm not going to worry about that today. It'll be tomorrow's work or next week's mistake. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Don't make it any harder than it needs to be. Get the queen cell in there and the cell protector. Put it between two frames with brood. That way the bees are aware that it's there. Help chew her out. 
your springs back together, close it up. Get about it for a couple of days. Come back in three, four, five days, see what's going on in there and get that self protector and self cup out there. Not too hard. <laughs>